Welcome to episode 240 of the Ross Bolin Podcast, otherwise known as RBP240, presented by Bolin Media. I am your host, Ross Bolin, here today with uh, co-host Jared Borislow. What's up, Jared? Um, this is Beatman Rosell. What? We were doing, Ross and I were doing beatboxing. Oh, uh, we were a little? In the intro, or we were talking about doing acapella, and if you remember, Rosell is the beatboxing MC of SSX Tricky. Why the hell would I remember that? One day I'm going to ask you, like, how you're doing at the top of the show, and you're going to make a joke that's a reference to something that I know, and it's just going to be miraculous. I can't believe you just tried, you snuck in an SSX tricky joke yeah. at the top. Well, the Venn diagram of our references that we make, it, like, your side of this of this two circles uh -huh. includes all movie references. I don't watch movies. As everybody knows, I prefer to watch a nice documentary. That's fair. And that's by choice, just for the record. I have a knowledge base of other things. I just choose to only fill my Venn diagram circle with movie references. Yeah. Uh, the overlapping part is... what what what? Where's our overlapping... Video games. Yeah, but you didn't get my SSX Tricky video games, so you're kind of contradicting yourself Westworld. immediately. Westworld, yes. Which we need to talk about. <laughs> One day we do, yeah. Okay. Uh, What's your Venn diagram having it, dickhead? Uh, I mean, I'm not so much about this. Discount sales for different soon to be out of business sports apparel Fast retailers, coupon cutting strategies yeah. and such. It's a lot of like those, you know, those really shady apps on your phone where it's like if you sign up your credit card and you use it, you get 15% back, but it comes in the form of a check mailed from Slovakia. Or yeah, no, I know yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, there's, I know those. There's Everybody quick cash. Does. There's Jumbo Cash. The fuck are you talking about? Also here today, producer slash co-host extraordinaire, Mr. Mike Moody. Mike, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Mike's been doing battle with this video setup, this brand new video setup here at Permanent Record with this... It's, uh, but it's incredible. It looks so good. These yeah, Mike's on the screen now. I didn't know Mike has a camera now. Computers and stuff everywhere. Mike's got a camera. There's cameras all over the place. Uh, shouts to everybody watching live on twitch.com slash boss rolling right now. Shouts to everybody watching on patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast if you're watching later on. If you're new to our show, the Ross Bolin podcast, almost every episode is broken down into segments which you can find with time cues below in the description. Now, some episodes with special guests or special topics are an exception to that rule. They may be less segmented. Uh, the Lance McCullers Jr. episode most recently, for example, that came out on Friday, RBP 239. That one was not segmented. That's a conversation, right? But you get the idea. Most of the episodes are structured so that you can consume them at your own pace uh, based on the chaotic schedule of your life, whether you're in school or you have work or whatever it is. Maybe you're not interested in a certain segment and you want to skip it or you've only got 20 minutes and there's a 20-minute segment you want to hit. Do your thing. And you don't have to have listened to a single one of the preceding episodes of RBP in order to enjoy episode 240. But if you like today's show, of course, I ask that you go back when you've got the time and hit those uh, that backlog. 239 episodes for you to soak in and enjoy when you got the time. Have at it. Follow us on Instagram at the Ross Boland Podcast, where every day we fill up our story with photos and videos sent in by you, our listenership, the RBP gang. We are also on Twitter at Ross Boland Pod, and we're on Facebook.com. Slash, uh, what if you're the middle aged aunt of one of our listeners, you can find it. Jared, are you a visually impaired human like Mike and I are? Uh, I always forget this about you. You're, are you a contact lens person or? No. No, you I'm have not. good eyesight. You have good yes. eyesight. I mean, I, yeah, I have decent eyesight. Okay, well, episode 240 of the Ross Boland podcast is brought to you by Felix Gray. And whether you're visually impaired like Mike and I or not, like Jared, they're making glasses you need to know about. Felix Gray and their incredible blue light blocking glasses, prescription, non-prescription, kids, adults. They've got you covered, Jared. 
You may not realize it, but the average American blasts their eyes with bright screens for 11 hours every day. And when you consider how much our days revolve around our devices, that doesn't seem so crazy. I'm staring at like either a phone or a computer yeah. or a TV all day, every single day. Some Americans uh, blast their eyes with sand. Yes, they do. Sand blasters, they're called. Uh, there are literally like nine screens in front of me just, just right now. <laughs> Um, that I'm there looking could at. Could be more. Yeah, it's yeah. it's chaos and all of I the blue turn light. Three more on. <laughs> Absolutely. From now on, I need to be wearing my Felix Grays when we record. Uh, the fact is, we can't eliminate extensive screen time from our lives, but we can protect our eyes with a pair of Felix Gray blue light filtering glasses available in both non-prescription and prescription. I have the Faraday frames in black. Uh, for those of you watching on Twitch, you've seen me wear them plenty of times. Uh, gaming at night because my eyes are worn out from my phone and my computer all day and they're awesome They're sleek and effective the majority of Americans live with tired dry eyes blurry vision or headaches caused by screens If that sounds familiar Felix great glasses are for you filtering out 90% of high energy blue light Eliminating 99% of glare coming from your daily barrage of screens. It's actually awesome There's so much glare on your computer screen and you don't realize it when you throw on some Felix Grays suddenly everything is more clear uh, they use proprietary blue light technology embedded into the lens as opposed to that cheap coating that can easily chip or scratch over time. Felix Gray is on a mission to make fashionable, high-quality blue light protection widely accessible by offering a variety of frames for all face shapes and style preferences. I love them. They're our first sponsor on Twitch as well. Those of you on Twitch have heard me speak to them plenty of times. Great supporter of the Boss Roland element of Bowling Media as well. I love these guys and their glasses. You need this. Listen up. Fantastic for gaming. Uh, movie and TV lovers, everyone who works on computers and their phones all day, don't go another day looking at screens without the help of some Felix Grays. Go to felixgrayglasses.com slash rbp for free shipping and 30 days of risk-free returns or exchanges. That's felixgrayglasses.com slash rbp, F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash rbp. So, Mike and Jared, this morning I went to my, uh, one, of my, one of my two favorite coffee shops, favorite coffee coffee spots I should say this one is called Austin Java and it's like 12 p.m. not really morning like you know morning for me yeah I guess you, you could say that's morning for a lot of people namely uh, people who are like high schoolers during the summer who are too lazy to get jobs sure sure and uh, bums the and the unemployed yes and then me and uh, and uh, yeah exactly. podcasters yes podcasters um, so I'm sitting there at my, one of my favorite coffee shops getting ready for this very show, and I'm like legit 10 minutes into that task. Like I, I put together a little outline with our sponsors and whatnot for each show, obviously preparing for it. And I'm sitting up at the bar, right? So like not at a table. Uh, there's tables and there's, and there's booths, but th there's also a big bar, like probably 30 feet long. And there's a couple TVs up there, and they usually have sports or some cool movie on. So I sit there, and I'll drink my coffee, and I'll uh, enjoy the bar. How do you, um, how do you take your coffee? I drink strictly vanilla lattes. Interesting. People think I'm joking when I say that. I'm dead ass serious. Like it's, you, like strictly, like you that's will the not. The only thing I, only coffee I drink. If they, I'm at my house, I have the pods, and I just stick them in there and do the pod coffee, and I pour some milk and do some sugar. But if I'm ordering at a coffee shop, that's the only thing I get is a vanilla latte. Do you specify the, the milk? Like you, are you like a whole sort of, milk? Whole yeah. Milk. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so I typically grind up there at the bar. And I'm sitting there, and I turn to my right, and there's this gentleman. And he's probably, he's an old dude, like real old. He's probably late 80s, maybe early 90s. But he was in good shape, though, for a white head. Like, he, like this, I'm talking whiter than white, this man's hair. It was like Dick Winters. Like, you needed to put your Felix Grays on because the glare coming off of this man's hair was... Is that bad? Oh, wow. Yeah, like, he, he had serious flow, though. This man was wearing his veteran's hat, but the flow was still very apparent, okay? So apparent. Do you think that he was completely bald under this hat? And this was a wig? Yes. No, not the wig. Like, he just had, you know, he had Larry David going on. No way. Absolutely not. That's what I'm saying. This is a glorious head of hair. My God. So full and luscious. Um, anyway, like I said, he's got his veteran's hat on. And you know the style with, like, the laurels on him or whatever? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and it hits me. I'm like, shit, dude. You have to. I knew we were going to be doing a Veterans Day special today. So I'm, it's Veterans Day. I'm already thinking sort of about the day. I'm like, you got to buy this guy's lunch. You've got to. It's been so long since I, like, I used to grab beers for guys in, in bars or whatever when I'd see him on occasion. Or, you know, there have been a few opportunities in my life where I've had an opportunity to pay for a beer or a drink for a veteran or for a soldier. 
Um, but it's been so long. I don't go to bars anymore, really. You know, so I'm not, that doesn't. It's not an opportunity that presents itself very often for me to give back. I, f I think that that's actually very un-American of you, and you should be calling into bars and saying, "Are there any veterans I can buy a beer for?" And it's here's like my card number. If any come in, <laughs> make sure it goes to this tab. Yes. And then I just give them your number. Yes. You and then that. your life gets ruined. And then I go to jail. Very quick tangent. For one credit card fraud. One time when Ross was still drinking, he left his tab open and I closed out his tab and I left the. Do you remember what I did with the tip? No. For $1 million. Oh, shit. <laughs> that, they probably got zero out of that then. They, I think. Uh, what happens if you do that I don't and there know. isn't that much money in the account? They get zero of it? I, I don't know. not register? I sent you a client? picture of it and you went like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well. That would be uh that would be that'd be tough to get from me at the moment. Um it might still be on your credit record. Yeah, it might be very well. Yeah. Last time I checked my credit record, there were a couple American Express cards uh, that weren't mine, and I was like, eh, fuck it. That was the bartenders. It never up. mattered, by the way. They let me buy a house. They let me yeah. buy a fucking car. Like nobody gives a shit. There's just wait, two wait, wait. Somebody series. open. There's two card. American Express cards on my credit record that have absolutely nothing to do with me. I think I can explain that. I, I think believe that's called identity. It, it theft. is called identity theft. That's definitely real. But also, I believe the bartenders uh, were like, "Oh, this guy was a million dollars. Let's open up two American Express cards in his name and slowly siphon away the two that are one million dollars from him over the course of maybe eight to ten years." Sure. So this was my opportunity to pay it back to soldiers, <laughs> and I was like, "All right, dipshit, this is your chance." Like. You never shut the fuck up about Band of Brothers. You actually do something for, for somebody who served here. And then I like, as I'm taking out my earplug, I hear the barista telling him that his tab is on her. And I'm like, shit, she beat me to it. Well, it's all good. Like, somebody took care of it. I can chill. I had that twinge. Like, man, this is out of your comfort zone. You've got your headphones, like, in, like, half out. Like, you're wired in writing this podcast. You're a pussy. And then, it, the, it, like, from inside of me, Strong Ross rose up and was like, fuck that shit. So I ripped my headphones out and I turned to him and I say, excuse me, sir, would you let me pick up your lunch? And I shit you not. He smiles, like, big ass smile. He's got these beautiful teeth. And he had, like, those fake, you know how old people get, like, dentures or whatever they're called? Just totally fake teeth. They cost, right. like, a hundred grand. Uh, and he goes, why? And I, I mean, he had to know why, right? Like, but he still asked, and I'm not exactly sure why he asked. Maybe he just wanted to hear me say it, so I answered, Veterans Day, uh, you know, to thank you, to thank you for your service. And he goes, what's your name, son? And, and so I told him. I was like, Ross. And his smile got even bigger. And, I mean, he sort of just started laughing. I mean, he was like the happiest I've seen anybody in a long time, this guy, in this moment. Like, his eyes lit up like a kid on Christmas morning. And I, I was like, what, what's up, what's up? And he goes, I'm Ross. His name was Ross. I found another Ross, Ross Nation stand up. It was a fucking Ross party, like on Veterans Day with a veteran Ross, this old head Ross. It was amazing. And then by the time like we got to that point where he was like, I'm Ross, we had like all the baristas like watching us. It was like a scene <laughs> out of like a television show. Oh, you know what a, I mean? A lifetime movie. Yeah. And I feel like I'm a shady enough character at that little bar up there at that coffee shop and at that point in the day the temperatures dropped about 60 degrees since then i had basketball shorts on and a hood and like the hood <laughs> over my head <clears throat> as i often do if i'm like locked in on the computer or whatever so i feel like it looked cool aesthetically from like a from a bystander standpoint too you were just, the bum though in the situation it was like a, it was like a nice veteran talking to a, uh, to a bum yeah but like a bum with a great heart clearly. yeah 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 <laughs> a bum with a heart of gold <laughs> that's what i am um fair anyway it, it was works. it was awesome Tracks. i i swear on all my dead relatives this is 100 percent true like zero exaggeration or embellishment i wrote it all down like right as it was happening because immediately after it took place because i was like i don't want to forget any of this so at that point i'm like freaking out too uh, and, and the guy was like i was like a little shook like i was like hold it together ross like this is likely one of the most respectable ross elders in existence maybe the oldest living ross for all i know and he's a veteran, and he's got Dick Winter's hair. Like, you know, don't like don't cry in front of him or anything like that. You want this man's respect. Yeah. And uh, then it turns out, the barista who picked up his tab, the reason she did that, beyond it being Veterans Day, is that she comes from a military family. And not like she had, like, one uncle or a brother or something like that. Uh, not that that's not badass, but she has had a member of her blood relative family 
in every war back to the Revolutionary War, which is like something I've heard in a movie at one point. Uh, like I was just like, what the f Like it almost made me like, prove it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like something you question. I was like, God damn, for Show real? Show me the tape. That is crazy, though. That is absolutely nuts. So, like, it, it, Veterans Day, so we just talked about how special this day is, her and I did, for the families of veterans and how little credit it receives. Um, I mean, how what these people give up, these families, what they give up, what they sacrifice, families of, 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 of people who serve, and how little credit that, that gets. We don't talk about it very much, or as much, you know. Um, civilians, we don't have to consider it much. Anyway, I tipped the barista like 300%. And if you're sitting there thinking like, oh, well, Ross is really talking himself up about what a good guy he is here at the front of the show. Technically, you people paid for all of this. Because uh, it was all on the Bowling Media credit card. Ah, I didn't yeah. put a fucking cent out of my own pocket. So, like, it's y'all uh, who took care of both Ross, the veteran badass, and the military family barista. So uh, thank you to everybody listening. You, you, uh, if you thought you didn't do anything cool for a veteran today, you actually did something cool for not only a veteran, but a veteran named Ross and then some barista chick who just a, uh, has a military family. How about that, Jared? That's more than a lot of people do. What did you do today, Jared? I came on this podcast and let you bounce that story off of me. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually, you've, you have uh, contributed in a massive way now. Thank You're you. part of the story. I am. It's I'm almost a, like you might as well have served in a war. I'm an RBP patron, so I helped. That counts. Also, your wife is too now. Yes. I saw, I, I get an email when, when, when people join. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, it's Mike's wife. And whenever it's somebody whose name I know, I'm like, I really should refund this. No. But if I refunded every name I knew, I'm like, how much money is that? And I start to think about it, and I'm like, I won't be able to pick up any more veterans tabs if I give away all this damn Patreon. Wow, that's money, a good Jared. way of spinning it for you. That's how I. <laughs> that's how I combine. That's how I make every decision in my head. Really, now <laughs> it's always about how can I take care of the veterans, the military families, uh, with this money. You know what I'm saying? Right. And on that yeah. note. Another sponsor, RBP240, is brought to you by Lisa. Your mattress is the most important purchase you'll ever make for your place. Whether you're grinding in a studio apartment or you live in a four-bedroom with two kids or some shit, having a fantastic bed for your body and mind to rest every night is paramount. Lisa knows how important rest is to a better life. Lisa is the foundation of a healthier, happier you. And to Lisa, a bed is more than just a place to sleep. It's a place for relaxation and rest. Y'all have heard me speak about my hybrid. I've got Lisa's most advanced luxury hybrid mattress made with premium foams and springs for enhanced pressure relief with edge-to-edge -edge support. Thoughtfully designed with the best of both worlds. It is the most comfortable bed, I believe, to, in existence in the world that I've ever laid eyes or body on. I, I highly couldn't more highly recommend it. And I highly recommend it to every single person that has ever asked, me, like, hey, is the Lisa thing legit? Or is it just a spot? No, dude, I'm not playing with you. Like, everything I own at this point. I've got their pillows. I've got their blankets. Everything they make is phenomenally comfortable and incredible for rest, sleepy time. I'm in my crib resting, relaxing all day, every day, Jared. Yeah, you also wanted a Lisa t-shirt, but they didn't sell it. So you bought a Hanes beefy tee in white and then a uh, black Sharpie and you wrote Lisa on it. What's hilarious, text. hilariously, they have sent me a black shirt before and I wear it all the time. A blank shirt? Black. Oh. With the Lisa logo in the middle. Really? And I wear it routinely. Is it more comfortable than a normal shirt? No, it is more comfortable. It is as comfortable as their bed. Their shirts are as, as, it's an equal amount, parallel. I uh -huh. think every time you do a Lisa ad, you need to just wear that shirt under what you're wearing. And take off just, the other shirt? Yeah. Hulk it out? Yeah. I'm going to tear it up all, until all my other clothes are gone and the right. only shirt I have left is the Lisa shirt. Yeah. Yeah. You um, would be a Lisa boy. Everybody, do, they do stuff to make sure everybody that, uh, that shops at Lisa knows that they're, they're actually contributing to a good company as well. One of the things they do is they donate one mattress for every 10 they sell through organizations that work in causes like foster care prevention. To date, they've donated more than 33,000 mattresses through more than 1,000 nonprofits. Lisa mattresses are made in the USA. In-home delivery and setup is available. Financing is also available. Do not miss out, RBP gang. Live healthier, live happier by resting deeper. Order today and get 15% off any mattress for a limited time at lisa.com slash RBP. Use the promo code RBP. That's L E E S A dot com slash RBP. Promo code RBP. And keep in mind, you get a 100 night risk free trial plus free shipping and return. Some announcements. Shout out White Claw Will from K Town. And my bad on the delay with the shout out, dude. Also, happy birthday to Aaron from Ohio. His 26th birthday is coming up November 28th. I have a, a, two amends. Mustache does not have an O in it. I feel like you've always said mouse dash. Doesn't have an O in it, though. 
Mouse, mo- where did you think mouse, the, o- where did you think the o was? You think it was I mo- thought it was stash? M O U S T or no. M O U S T A U S H E. M O U S T A Mouse. I swear to God, it's like spelled this way in Europe or something. For some reason, he spelled it that way the other day, and I was like, yes, that's that's right. Mike was like, that's, sure, uh-huh, moron. That's correct. Continue <laughs> with your podcast, self-titled podcast, in which you are now trying to say that mustache has an O in it. And no C. It's a thing that I sometimes do. It is. I uh, mean, change words. You, I and think the spelling of them. You make them your own, because it's your show. It could be said. It could be said. I've seen it both ways. I've heard it both ways, and I've only seen it written. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's sort of, you can make your own language. It's like the language you and I have our own language, our own secret yeah, language. Like he, I, do, I done. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, also, the population of China is 1.386 billion. It's time for our first segment. Badass vets you haven't heard of. The second ever iteration of badass, it's veterans. Um, Not veterinarians. But, but, yeah, so people were like, why don't you make it badass veterans? Just be point blank about it. Well, here's the thing. What if one day we want to pivot mm. and we want to work in a vet? Yeah. I'm not joking. There are some badass vets out there. I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. It, like if one helps out your dogs, then you'd want to feature them. Sure. Have them on the show. Maybe. Maybe uh, maybe it's in exchange for free veterinary work. Oh. Maybe. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's expensive. I'm just, yeah, it is expensive. It's no joke. It's no joke. Thousands of, when you buy a dog, thousands of dollars down the line and you think, but it's always like, it's just like having a kid. You know what I mean? It's like you you spend that money out of love. And just don't think about it, Jared. Yeah. Just don't think about it. Bury it deep down. And then and then you also have to feed them. Mhm. Mhm. That's expensive, right? And clean their feet when they run around in the mud outside and their butts when they sometimes get poop butt. That's what I call it <laughs> when they uh, they get poop stuck on their butt. Anyway, today's badass vet you haven't heard of is a veteran <laughs> and it's Marvin Glenn Shields. Marvin Glenn Shields was the first and only United States Navy CB to be awarded the Medal of Honor. He was also the first sailor to receive the Medal of Honor for heroism above and beyond the call of duty in the Vietnam War. Uh, he was born December 30th, 1939 in Port Townsend, Washington. He lived near Port Townsend on Discovery Bay in Gardner, Washington. Graduated from Port Townsend High School in 1958. Port Townsend, stand up. And then he moved to Hyder, Alaska, where he worked at a mineral basing mining company and gold mining projects started by Port Townsend Company. So he joins the Navy, <coughs> excuse me, January 8th, 1962, to be, a, to be a Navy CB. He's assigned to the Naval Air Station in Glencoe, Georgia for apprentice, apprenticeship training in May, which he completed in May 1963. In September, he's assigned to take construction mechanic training at the Naval Construction Training Center at Port Hinimi, California, which he completed that month. Afterward, He's assigned to Alpha Company, uh, Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 11. On November 18th, he deploys to Okinawa and was assigned there until September of 1964. So on November 1st, he was assigned to CB Team 1104, Naval Construction Battalion 11, and completed CB training at Port Hunimi, 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 uh, January 22nd, 1965. The CB team consisted of nine CBs, including one officer. And... Shields and CB Team 1104 deploys to Saigon, the Republic of Vietnam, arriving February 1st, 1965. On the night of June 9th, 1965, the unfinished Army Special Forces camp at Dong Zai Zhou, unclear on the pronunciation, was mortared and attacked by the 272nd Viet Cong Regiment. It was about 2,000 uniformed Viet Cong, and the Special Forces compound was captured the next morning. After being wounded by mortar fire, Shields, our badass vet, fought with special forces soldiers against the enemy, carrying up uh, needed ammunition to the firing line positions. Although wounded again by shrapnel and shot in the jaw on June 10th, he helped a soldier and a CB carry the badly wounded special forces captain in charge of the camp to a safer position in the compound. After four more hours of fighting, uh, greatly weakened, Shields volunteers to help special forces unit lieutenant Um, Charles Q. Williams, who was now the acting commander since the Special Forces commander was one of the first badly wounded in the battle, destroy a Viet Cong machine gun outside the perimeter, which was threatening to kill everyone, now in the adjacent district headquarters building, which was now under the lieutenant's command, and it's occupied holding off uh, the Vietnam attackers from all sides, essentially saving everyone's lives. Jeez. Intense. It reminds me of Lieutenant Spears from uh, from, uh, Band of Brothers. I uh, haven't seen, 
but want to. Mm, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the lieutenant, armed with a 3.5 rocket launcher, which was loaded by Shields, destroyed the machine gun. On the way back to the building, Williams was wounded for the fourth time. Shields for the third time. Shot in both legs. Shields was air evacuated afterward from Dongzo, Zai, whatever, with five other CBs by the direction of the lieutenant to Saigon on June 10th, but died during the evacuation. An incredibly heroic story. Wow. These, these, a lot of these guys who ended up in situations in World War II, particularly in this, in the Pacific, and then in guys like in Vietnam, um, like our lieutenant here, that were it, it, it was so much chaos. I feel like that doesn't it doesn't exist as much in war anymore. That that on foot chaos of having to scramble to try to save lives right. and your own life, it, it, it's not really an element. And such a huge lack of intel they had back then as well. You know, all the intel was... Especially in Vietnam. Yeah, all the intel was not um, digitally available or yeah. or curated as it, as it is now. They didn't know what the hell they were heading into. No, most of the time. No, it, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm going to bring up Brand of, Band of Brothers a lot today. It's one of the things you... you <laughs> it's so realistic and it's such a good... It's just like it's like watching a documentary, basically. I mean, the guys in the act, that actually told the story are at the front of it. And then, you know... The, then the episode plays out or whatever. The real guys, the old guys, the old whiteheads, like the dude I met today. So, so they're the, probably wait, gone. So now. they're, can you explain that a little bit more? They narrate the actual men of Easy Company, several of the actual characters in the miniseries, you know, um, the, the retelling of their story, narrate for, or, or tell you a little bit like before each episode That's crazy. about what you're about to see. Like the basically. actual vets. Yeah, wow. the wow. actual vets. That's nuts. Um, it's like, it's one of the very cool elements of that miniseries that, that just really makes it hit home even further. It, it would have hit anyway. It's so good. But having those guys and seeing their faces makes it like 20 times more meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, Shields was buried with a Marine Corps Honor Guard at Gardner Cemetery, Gardner, Washington, on June 19, 1965. His name is listed on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial on Panner, panel 02E, row 007. He was posthumously presented, posthumously? Posthumously. Posthumously, I always do this wrong. Presented the Medal of Honor at a ceremony at the White House on September 13, 1966. His wife received the award from President Lyndon B. Johnson. In the presence of his father, mother, daughter, and brother, Special Forces Lieutenant Williams was also present during the ceremony and had himself had himself received the Medal of Honor on July 5, 1966, for his heroic actions during the 14-hour siege of the Special Forces camp at Dong, Zizo, whatever. All 20 of the CBs and Special Forces soldiers were personally awarded for their actions at Dong, Zizo, whatever. Um, so the guys that were outside of their individual unit as well. Pretty crazy. And that's today's badass vet. You haven't heard of Marvin uh, Marvin Glenn Shields. Tight. Wow, that's nuts. Yeah, I I could I would never be able to to do that. No, you and I would be piss pants, and worthless. We, we'd be piss pants and poop butt. We'd just be turds out there. <laughs> we'd be total turds out there, Jerry. I don't I, I don't even play sports. So, right. Yeah. Oh okay. God. Yeah, we have to talk about this a little bit later. Uh, today's episode of RBP is also brought to you by Quip, makers of the greatest toothbrush in the history of or oral hygiene. This thing is crazy good. It's going to blow your mind. I'm not messing with you the first time you brush with a Quip using their built-in two-minute timer that buzzes every 30 seconds to ensure you achieve a full and even clean. You're going to finish that brush sesh, and your brain is going to go like, you know when you like when you have like a good massage or like after you sat, sat in a hot tub for a while and you're just like, you just feel more relaxed? like your brain's a little bit mushy, that's what you're going to feel like. Or just like you left a very gentle and loving dentist. I've been using Quip for over two years. Uh, it is an incredible, incredible toothbrush. It's the best. You will not find a better toothbrush. It does not exist. Fantastic sponsor and supporter of the RBP gang. Make sure to use the code at the end of the read. If you're brushing your teeth at this point with a non-Quip toothbrush, you're in direct violation of the RBP gang ordinance number four. No excuse at this point. If you've been holding out, now is the time. Make the change. Also, a fantastic gift. Great stocking stuffer for the holidays. Um, they automatically deliver brush heads every three months for clean new bristles right on schedule. Sleek, intuitive design. It's simple and comes with a travel cap that doubles as a mere mount. They're phenomenal. Quip starts at just $25. You'll get your first refill free at getquip.com slash RBP. This is a simple way to support our show and start brushing better with the best toothbrush possible. But you have to go to getquip.com slash RBP, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash RBP to get your first refill free. Go right now to get. QUIP.com 
slash RBP. Next segment, best war movies. So if you need something to watch tonight, like a, you said a warm movie, so like a very, a, a, it emanates heat. Mm-hmm. The warmest movies. Yes. That's what we're going to discuss. Now. No, if you, need, if you need something to watch tonight or tomorrow, since this is dropping late in the evening, to remind you how much uh, others have sacrificed so that you can live this life, we're going to give you a list of great war movies and, and maybe one miniseries. It's options. Okay? And now I'm talking like war movies that encapsulate, you know, the suffering and lives of real soldiers, not necessarily like Inglorious Bastards. Or not like Casablanca. People put Casablanca on a war movies list because it's the direct result of right. Yeah, but I don't it's like war time. What well, about yeah. Avatar? Good question, Jared. No, my number one is Star Wars. Is that yeah. Canon? Also, no. Well, it's, well, so what's your what kind of war? Okay. It has to be an, a they human have to war? have happened in history. Yeah, they can't be fictional. I mean, for all I know, everything James Cameron has ever done is a biopic. Do you say biopic for real? You say biopic? Do you not? You do? I say a lot of words incorrectly. Well, or... I know that, but you don't. You, like Mustache. you look at it. What, Mouse. Ma- Mustache. Mustache. You, you actually look at it and you go, Mustache. "Oh yeah, I know that it's uh, bio from biographical and pick from picture, but I'm just gonna put them together and make it sound like a medicine." Exactly. <laughs> biopic. It's, it sounds like a like a cream for your anus. Biopic. Yeah, I was I was gonna try to ramble off that like a list of uh, all the warnings at the end of those commercials, but I don't know enough of them off the top. It's like your penis may fall off. Yeah. You may have trouble breathing. You may have trouble sleeping. You may have trouble achieving an erection. You may have trouble seeing. Food may lose taste. Like, and you're by the end of the warnings, you're like, oh fuck me. You forgot yeah. anal bleeding. They all have. They all anal, have yeah, anal bleeding. Anal bleeding. Yeah. yeah, sometimes fissures. And even lesions. They, <laughs> the the medicine lesions, le- seizures and lesions when they combine yes. into into. Yeah. Seasons or leisures. Seasons and leisures. <laughs> <laughs> Leisurely. What's crazy seasons. is the the anal bleeding medicine makes you bleed even more. Even more profusely. Yes. It's just like when you go get a flu shot. They're actually giving you a little bit of the flu, you know. Yeah. To to the so that like, see so you'll be ready later on. So your body like they're like, look, your ass is bleeding. We're gonna give you this. It's gonna make you bleed even more, so that when it goes back to the normal amount of bleeding, you'll appreciate it. Know your enemy. Exactly. Which actually, we can talk about war movies now. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, all the way full circle. That's how we I, do. I took a peek at your list, but I I didn't look at it all. Uh huh. I'm hoping there's one that I love that you and I have talked about before that will make the list. So that's not on it see. already. Let, I I don't think it's there. But. Can you say it now? You want to start yeah. with that? Yeah. Three Kings. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so here's here's the reason I didn't put Three Kings. Mike. Three Kings. Yes, Three Kings is uh, starring Mark Wahlberg, Ice Cube, and. And, Cl- and George Clooney. Spike Jones. Phenomenal movie. I didn't put Three Kings because it's a f- totally fictionalized storyline, right? Okay. So the whole thing is more about like these three individual characters and how they're trying to get that gold yeah. rather than war itself or like how. Yeah. I mean, it's got it's enough realism. Mm-hmm. I mean, Wahlberg take. Well, no, spoiler alert. You know the part I'm talking about. He's got the thing in the side to make himself breathe or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. there's enough realism that maybe, maybe it's it should count. Really hardcore torture scene. One At, of the guys dude, you dies. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm gonna count it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna retroactively count it. All I right. saw it on a list and I was like, yeah. I don't know if I count Three Kings, and then I didn't yeah. put it on mine for that reason. But um, to start with, some obvious ones. Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. It, it still holds up so well, in the same exact way that Band of Brothers does, and obviously that's because it was created by the same uh, Tom Hanks was the star of it and Spielberg was the director um, as well as Tom Hanks and Spielberg then went on to produce uh, Band of Brothers together so that's why you have a similar result in in quality but like do you remember the first time you saw Saving Private Ryan I do I saw the uh, the opening scene before I ever saw the movie I okay. saw it as like a stand my friends like dude you need to watch this and so I watched it and I was like oh my god this is terrifying it was out at a point where in the internet culture there was that existed like go check out this, this is like one yeah scene. it was like right after it was on youtube like you know a year or two after okay i just think like that movie you didn't see saving private ryan in theaters no that's so weird to me i was probably like eight but you un-american pussy boy so <laughs> that the opening 20 minutes of that movie are some of the most intense 20 minutes of any movie. I, I would compare ever. my experience watching Saving Private Ryan only to The Passion of the Christ. Mm. 
-hmm. That's the only movie I've left where I was like shook to my core it's by brutal. the level of brutality. Yeah. Um, Mike, do you remember? Do you remember seeing Saving Private Ryan for the first time? Yeah, I was ten, fifteen, and Somewhere I knew in there. I knew I was in for for something because yeah. I read about it a lot and you right. Know, but fuck. Yeah, it it's one of those things you can't really. Yeah. It sort of changed the landscape for war movies as well. Yeah, I mean, sure. like everything moving forward has had to sort of stand up to that standard that Saving Private Saving Private Ryan set. How was that in the '90s? How was that 1998? That that opening scene holds up, dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the whole movie does, it's and it's Spielberg. old as shit. Yeah, that's that is. Yeah, I guess Steven Spielberg like that really says it all. Timeless. It also, is. Vin Diesel. Yeah, I, you always forget that Vin <laughs> Diesel's yeah. in there. It's oh, like man, you always the cast forget. is. The cast it's, is it's incredible. a bunch of people who are just about to pop off. Right. It's so there's really a whole bunch good. of randoms. Yeah. Tom Sizemore. And yeah. then oddly, that's sort of how Band of Brothers is too. There's all these random faces that pop up that you're like, wait, what the hell? Like at one point, Jimmy Fallon rolls up in a truck and he's right. like, hey, I've got some extra ammo. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'm trying really hard not to laugh right now. It's what I don't know why he sounds like a South Park character <laughs> when I do Jimmy Fallon, but he, that was just Terrence or Philip. Okay, we need to. I didn't realize. I knew that it was stacked with random people like Vin Diesel. Some of the names that are in this. Read movie, the list. It's nuts. Tom Hanks, Matt Damon, Vin Diesel, Ted Danson is in it. Mm -hmm. Did not know that. Dude, one yes. scene, I think. Dude, yeah. dude, yes. He's yeah. in like one freaking scene. Ted Danson. Paul Giamatti is in it. I can't even remember Giamatti's. Wow. Oh, shit, dude. Yeah, dude. Dennis Farina. This is crazy. Yeah, nice. it's an insane amount of people. And then there's Vin Diesel, which and that, is the, yeah, somehow I mean, the weirdest one of them all. <laughs> and like he what? dies in like such a horrible way. Not takes as a, bad. Takes a sniper shot. Spoiler not alert. A, yeah, not as bad as the as the guy who gets stabbed. No, nobody dies more than. Worse I than, hate Private uh, Upham Adam is the most Colbert. hateable character in the history of cinema. Let's let's talk about Private Upham briefly. What a bitch! Even though I think you just summed it up pretty well. That is that it, he. I mean, he's part of the reason when you leave that movie theater. You're so shook because you have to you you put it, he it, his character forces you to put yourself in the position of like what would I have holy done? shit this is a situation that that would occur in war and you have to make the decision to either go into the room and try to save your friend like a man like a fucking <laughs> like, like hero you like you should like that's the right choice or break like Upham did and lose all you can't recover from that I will say you can't come back from that. I think no coming back from an up a moment. Sorry, Continue. no. I sorry. The the German guy walking by Private Upham after looking him in the eyes is the biggest cucking in the history of cinema. Oh yeah, that's uh, including uh, there's never all been a, pornographic yes. cinema, including all cinema. The room with Tommy Wiseau, where Tommy Wiseau is an actual cuck. It's he's a cuck in the room. I mean, he doesn't actually view it, but he gets cucked. I've only seen The Disaster Artist. You need to see the I, you I, you I watched them the same day for the first time. I don't you need think to watch I can do it. I don't think I can do it. It is, Ross. It is. We need to do a podcast episode on The Room. And, and, and hand jobs. I feel like we're two in. years late for that. No, it, we're not. You, you, were, you were eight years late on Crank, and people still love that. I think we were like 15 years late on Crank. <laughs> yeah. Which, which was, you know. I'm down whatever. for a Room podcast. For fine, sure. fine. We'll yeah. do it. Yes. But anyway, yeah. Um, the cast is insane. Saving Private Ryan's an all-time great. It, it, it's one that, like, no matter how many times you've seen it, just like Band of Brothers which I just finished another rewatch of, it will give you an appreciation for what men and women in combat experience, what they what they go through in an effort to protect our country. Um, the Hurt Locker is one that really had an impact on me because it's like a very cerebral, it's a lot of the like mental strain of being a soldier in the, uh, in the most intensive situations possible as a dude defusing active bombs in Iraq. What am I going to say, though? What? Who is the star of the Hurt Locker? Jeremy Renner. <laughs> it's Jeremy Renner. So I, mean, I can't watch that movie anymore. Damn it! If all Renner movies been ruined yes. now, I can't watch a movie with Jeremy Renner in it and not laugh my ass off at Ren's Day. Okay, I didn't consider. <laughs> I didn't consider that there are a couple movies that I would have considered to be classics that Jeremy Renner was in that are now sort of like that they are, have a a dark cloud over them. As a result of his, you gotta uh, separate the art from the man. <laughs> in this case, especially the, in, in that case, with movies yeah. when it's like a whole bunch of artists and then a hundred, two hundred different people have put their heart and soul into a project. I can't let Ren's Day, and then the <laughs> uh, it turns out that was like the least of our worries in terms of Jer Jeremy Renner allegedly, um, <laughs> ruin all the movies that he was in. But yeah, the Hurt Locker Renner. That was a good movie though. 
I watched that on an Amtrak. Ah, never been on an Amtrak. They have so if you ever go on an Amtrak, upgrade to the cabinet. It's like a little tiny cabin with like a bunk bed because otherwise you're sleeping on the seats and they're really uncomfortable. Interesting. Yes, I will keep that in mind. Thank you. Full Metal Jacket. Brutal classic. I Holy shit! Have not seen all of it, but I've seen certain scenes. It, it you need to go watch Full Metal Jacket in full. Wearing a metal jacket. I do have a vendetta against Full Metal Jacket. What is that and why? So Please my vendetta yourself, against Full Metal Jacket is that it beat out uh, a movie it should not have beaten out for best movie of, I believe, 1989? Hmm. 1987? One of the two? That is insane to hold it against the movie. Is that the year that it was? Okay, so and here's the movie that it beat out. Uh, it's a movie that gets zero love. People call it the worst flop of all time. That movie is Ishtar. Starring uh, <laughs> Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty, as well as Isabel Ajani. It is a movie where Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty, uh, there are two bar singers, and they go to Morocco t to further their careers, and Holy. they get caught up in a very crazy uh, Moroccan scheme. Was and this actually nominated? Yeah. It, it, okay, so it was one of the biggest flops all time. I'll tell you, Jared, it's got very, very bad ratings. It does. And it's 1987, the year of my birth. 1987, that's what it was. The reason why it has such bad ratings... How did you know... Here's the question. There's no way it was nominated. Absolutely zero chance. No way. How in the hell did you know it came out the same year as Full Metal Jacket? I think because it was the second, like, most hyped release, and then it did terrible in the box office. I don't... It, why in, I know that doesn't matter... In 87, Jared, when you were negative five or some shit? Negative six. So you weren't even a sperm in your father's testicles yet. It, so my brother and I got really obsessed with this. My brother actually owns the you know what double movie posters for Ishtar, and the, they're huge. The they're like five the explanation <laughs> isn't as important as the pointing out that you somehow continue with your weird Ishtar rant, please, sir. It's a great movie. It had a humongous, massive budget. And it's a great movie. It is. They blew $55 through fifty-five million dollar budget in yeah, nineteen eighty-seven. That was a shit ton, and they brought in not, fourteen point four. Yeah, not a lot. So they lost over forty million dollars. Uh, however, Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty can't go wrong there. There's some great one-liners. I mean, they clearly went wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't go. Here's the synopsis: Two untalented nightclub performers get caught in the crossfire when they are booked in the war-torn Middle East, thanks to Rebel Shira. The duo, duo will find themselves in the middle of a revolution. This sounds not only like it potentially was the worst movie of that year, but that it may have <laughs> aged worse than anything in the history of cinema. I guarantee this is offensive to not only the entire... No! <laughs> you haven't seen it! I guarantee it is. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's not. I'm looking at one photo from the film, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm like, this has got to be offensive. It's not offensive. Okay. You check it out. I I don't. So here's the thing, you uh, can. They ended up. You could only watch it on Betamax because <laughs> they didn't put it on VHS or DVD. I don't but know they, what Betamax but is. But they did put it out on Blu-ray. Why do you know what Betamax is? Again, what is your deal? This is so fucking weird. This is neither here nor there. You don't need to know why I know the random things I know. Just know that around the year 2009, they put it on Blu-ray, so you can get it on Blu-ray. Okay. Noted. Some other ones. Platoon. As an old one. Oh, Dunkirk was a was a recent one that I saw in theaters that was uh, that was badass, especially like the auditory elements. I haven't seen any of it. Dunkirk. I've heard it's good. I've heard it's like a lot of people said it was overhyped because there's no. It dialogue, was overhyped, but everybody said it's one of the most visually stunning. Movies. I think it was more overhyped because it was Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Like, because he's become uh, almost I, like this. I actually didn't see it. I never oh saw no Dunkirk. shit! I was just kind of Nolan out at that point. Yeah. So. I mean, I mean, I'll it, get around to it. I saw like it, 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 it toward the end of its theatrical release. It's mm -hmm. not one that I like rushed out to hit. It's like I just happened to as well. For some reason, it didn't necessarily hype so hard once it hit theaters. But it is really cool um, and very, very well made. And it won a bunch of awards. Especially, it, it, just the sound and the way it's shot and everything is nuts. Hacksaw Ridge I've spoken about on this show before as a fantastic war movie. It's the one that I blacked out watching. Is that Mel Gibson? Uh, that he directed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's phenomenal. It's about like the dude who refuses to use a gun, the non sequential uh, right. sequitur or whatever his name is. What's it called? The non invasive Seabiscuit. informant. 
the uh the uh nah he chooses not to use a weapon i always forget what that uh the, conscientious, conscientious objector yeah. yeah 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 interesting yeah yeah lone survivor is that the one with the guy in is it africa africa is that where it is getting out of africa with no. robert redford and meryl streep it's just called out of africa right yeah yeah we talked about getting that. out of africa that's like escape from alcatraz which also doesn't have the word getting in it what were you gonna say though <laughs> <laughs> is Lone Survivor the one where the where the guy is the last one in his group? He like won Medal of Honor. Is that what that is? It's uh, Mark Wahlberg, right? Oh, yeah, what yeah, playing Marcus Luttrell. Yes, um, based Marcus on the Luttrell. book, uh, That's what I was thinking. based on the book of the same name. One of my favorite books I've ever read. Actually, I read it a few times, which is weird. It like struck me in a strange way, where I was just like, for this very reason, it was like I couldn't believe the type that what this dude went through yeah. and what he survived, not just through that experience in the mountains in Afghanistan. That you can read about in the book or watch the movie. Um, I don't want to spoil exactly what happens, but the training and to get there and how his whole life had sort of built toward becoming this Navy SEAL. It's just an incredible story. And uh, it's a good movie as well with Wahlberg. They did a good job of putting it on the screen and not really blowing it, even though just like, I'll be honest with you, man. Wahlberg is reaching Jeremy Renner levels of strange. He has got to tone it down. <laughs> He's a weird dude. He's a strange cat. The circle, the crew he rolls with is strange as fuck. Remember when he, he almost died on 9-11? Do you remember that whole Wahlberg storyline? I only remember the part where he came out and said that he he doesn't believe in masturbation. He's never understood it conceptually. And that he could have prevented 9-11 if he had been on that flight. Did uh, he say that? Yeah, that, oh, he, no. that he could have prevented it. It's a hot take. That's, it that's, was, a, that's a bad take. It was a hot take. <laughs> But that's the type of shit that comes out of Wahlberg's mouth. Dude, Wahlberg, for some reason, Mark Wahlberg has gotten a pass to do whatever the fuck he wants. Who gave him that? Money. Who, who granted this man a pass? Go back. I was out on Wahlberg when he disowned Boogie Nights, which is like my favorite movie of his. Why did he? Because he... Morally a, objects it now? Morally objects, yeah. See, he's just Pretty a much. very, very strange guy. Yeah. It's... Obviously, look, I've, I've touched on this before, but... The higher levels of fame and fortune you reach, the more difficult it becomes to remain connected to reality. I mean, this happens with not even famous people, with just wealthy people all the time. You lose connection with reality and the real world. And then if you're surrounded by a bunch of yes men, like Kanye is perhaps, you can spiral off into, or Renner, you can spiral off into this bad place. And like Wahlberg just feels like sometimes like he's approaching that cliff. Do you see the videos of him with his boys? Yeah, that's why I, that's ex that's the only evidence yeah. I have and I'm referring to you mean directly. The television show Entourage. They, yeah. <laughs> <that> we, <laughs> no, his Instagram. He puts up these videos of like him and his boys working out or like he's like making them work out. He makes them dance. He forces them yeah. to dance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he forces it, them to dance at like four in the morning. It's culty. Like they're in a rave club, but it's just like his white friend Todd and then some suave black guy. And, and they're like, only drinking like Lacroix. Yeah, yeah. But Todd's got no moves and is clearly being forced to dance. No one's ever been more clearly being forced to dance than Todd. <laughs> People having a gun fired at their feet as someone screamed, dance, dance, were more like, more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, I know. What you're I mean, Todd is being forced <laughs> to dance. And it's like, he, Todd. It's, if he doesn't, he knows he loses connection to Mark Wahlberg. Yes. Wouldn't it's, be the worst thing, almost, Todd. Think about it. It's almost his job to dance for Mark Wahlberg. You could call Todd. A professional dancer. We need Todd on the pod. I would interview the shit out of that guy. If somebody can get that dude from that Wahlberg video that's always having a dance, my <laughs> God, I would interview him so hard. So hard. Uh, Patton is a great old school one. Hell yeah. If, if you want to get a feel for like uh, the, the, you know, I mean, it's not the World War II generation. It's like, I don't want to say a different generation, but because for whatever reason, I consider all of the wars that have taken place after World War II to be like a section and then before as a section. I don't know why. Um, but for the old school wars and how generals war, were and how one of the most infamous and famous and respected and uh, controversial generals in the history of our country operated. What's that dude's name who plays Patton? Uh, George C. Scott. Yeah. Classic actor. This thing won seven Oscars. I think he won Best Actor. Wow. It's, it's an unbelievable movie. I know a lot of y'all who are younger uh, probably haven't seen Patton. It is often on television around these great american holidays like veterans day the fourth of july etc and also during the holiday season i feel like Patton is often on tv on like the hallmark channel do you guys remember video discs not 
not Blu-rays or just these discs. Not DVDs? Okay. Not, not hit clips? You remember, you remember old floppy disks? Yes. Yeah. Picture that, but like the size of a 21-inch monitor. Like yeah, I, have I vaguely remember this. And they're white, and they had the movie poster on yeah. top. Yeah. We what had, the hell did those go to? My, I don't know, but my grandparents had a bunch of those, and one of them they had was Patton. Wow. So we would always – my grandpa would love war movies. He would always pick up this huge video disc and shove it in the thing and watch Patton. Nice. So that's, what I, that's my Patton memory. Yeah. I, I, my, my Patton memory is like my dad always was watching it. Yeah. On like the 4th of July and holidays like that. So right. it's like just sort of connected to that whole – Celebration of our country. Patton's nicknames. He had two. Guess what they were? They're really badass. What's a badass nickname? You the can think Bull. Of? Uh, the first one was Bandito. The second one <laughs> is the famous one. Old Blood and Guts. That I remember. Yeah, how yeah, the yeah. hell did he? How did George C. Scott, a pasty white guy, that's I'm just picturing him instead of actual Patton, get the nickname Bandito? Well, what do you have to do to earn that? He's from Southern California. So maybe something with that. It was it was it was in you know what it was it was when he was surfing before the war, surfing in on the SoCal coast. Patton was famous for that, for just he wanted to just hang ten and then the fucking war broke out. Next thing you know, he's a general. Yeah, giving a speech in front of a gigantic American flag. He's actually featured in the uh, the movie Surfs Up. Is yeah. that the one with the penguin surfing? Uh huh. Yeah, he's, uh -huh. he's in Surf Ninjas. In Surf, oh. he's in, sorry, I misspoke. He's in Surf Ninjas. Ah, yeah. Um, to continue, Glory. There's not a lot of good Civil War ones. Oh yeah. Was it Civil War or Revolutionary? It doesn't it's matter. Civil War, yeah. Ne neither Revolutionary nor Civil War have very soldiers. many. Yes, Denzel. it's about yeah. a, the Black Unit. Denzel's in it. Uh, Matthew Broderick, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, it's a it's a lot. Yeah, it's a great movie. Andre um, Brower. No, it's a crazy, crazy cast. Uh, to stay in the old school van, the Deer Hunter is is a brutal look at like you're given like the normal lives of these very, 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 very young men. And an incredibly famous cast again with this one, <clears throat> and then they're torn away from that those lives, and you experience their hell in Vietnam, and it is just it. The Deer Hunter is legitimately traumatizing. That's another one I'll put up there with Saving Private Ryan and uh, Passion of the Christ. It's like when you watch it the first time, you're going to be affected. Another Deer Hunter that is traumatizing, uh, the Deer Hunter from Bambi. Mm-hmm. The one that slot his mom. Yes, that's a very traumatizing deer hunter. Slot. Erd. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Apocalypse Now, another old one. That, I, it's hard for me to say that's a war movie. Did high school that, ruin Apocalypse Now? High school in general? Why? So I feel like I had to watch it 26 times in high school. Oh, really? Your high school, you watch Apocalypse Now? It's wow. like a five-hour movie. You my high school just put on cut? movies, bro. I told you, my, I, I've told you, the listeners... I had a biology teacher at one point, a science teacher, that all he did was put on October Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Every day? Not joking. Like You watched, all of the, you watched October Sky 200 nah, times? Nah, but probably once a month he'd come in and be like, oh, I'm not doing shit today. And he'd throw on October Sky and we'd be like, all right, time to watch Jake Gyllenhaal build the rockets again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the high school I went to. Shouts to Westside High School, Houston, Texas. Shouts to HISD. Potentially one of the worst school districts in the in the country. Uh, I mean, just a total fucking shit show at that school, man. What a disaster. It was supposed to be like this new shining beacon of hope in the HISD community. And within three years, it was so bad that my parents got an apartment in a different zoned high school oh, yeah. so that my brother could go elsewhere. <laughs> Which, ironically, my dad ended up living in. But that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> then... <laughs> That's okay. why they got the apartment. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got the apartment. Uh, to finish the list, American Sniper is another more that's recent one. Um, if you want one that's about a war that's not centrally focused on a soldier, the pianist. The what? The pianist. Don't make me say it again, Jared. <laughs> and then, uh, what did I, am I missing any? No, those, Black are, Hawk those Down. are all mine. Black Hawk Down. I'm going to yeah. say this. I'm not a big Black Hawk Down guy. Mm. Weird, weird story. I'll do it quickly. Um... You remember the uh, the Beastie Boys album with the the anchovies cover with the thing being peeled off? Paul's Boutique? Nah, that... nah. It was this. Don't look at me. Hill. It was uh, Hello Nasty. Planetary. It was on it. Hello Nasty. 
Maybe. Um, well, whatever the one intergalactic planetary was on. The day that came out, I had to get on a bus to go on a field trip for school, and I had a stomach ache. And I listened to that album the whole time, and I felt terrible. And any time I hear intergalactic, planetary, planetary, intergalactic, that's it makes me feel a little bit sick to my stomach. And that's how that is for me. I've never seen Black Hawk Down. I just knew it was a movie. I must have seen it sick or something, though. You've never even seen it. Fucking ass. So you, I think you horses, stop licking my hand, you horse's ass. I think that uh, things like Family Guy made it so that I make a lot of references to things I've never seen. Do you do you agree with this? You're a copy of a copy of. Here's copy. the problem. Yes. Seth MacFarlane gets all those jokes. He just doesn't care that nobody else does. He knows all those references. He knows it's that's not him just like throwing out random shit. He just doesn't give a shit that nobody. I, it's probably eighty percent of the jokes on Family Guy. I'm like, never heard of that person. Never heard of that person. Never heard of that person. Never heard of that. Per and I just don't care. I'm like, there's enough other funny shit that I'm like, you know what, Seth? Fine. Have your fucking weird jokes, you weirdo. And the thing about this is I'll never fully support him until he makes an Ishtar reference. Jesus. I feel like it's like people who listen to mine. It's like there's enough good stuff here, so it's okay when I mispronounce like 80% of words. I am 100% sure he's made several Ishtar references on one of his shows. Actually? For real? Yeah. What? I need to find this. Somebody yeah. send this Anybody to me. Anybody has made an Ishtar reference, it's Seth MacFarlane. Because he's the most obscure, mm -hmm. weirdly knowledgeable of everything ever made in movie f film and i get in fact yes i guarantee he's made an ishtar you joke can't guarantee that i can't fucking guarantee it hey is stripes a war movie there was no war going on at the time right i think it still counts because yeah. it's about the camaraderie of it yeah. all and the sort of the, right you know and right? they go into battle at the end sort of for the giant made up tank yeah yeah even though it's funny. I don't know if I actually... I'm going to go back real quick. I, I, like I said, I don't think Apocalypse Now is a war movie. I think it's a movie about, with a deeper plot that takes place during war. Thoughts, Mike? I think that's fair. Because not it's not about battle. It's about like... Well, but this dude it's is... It's about the horror. But this, horror. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. And the dude's been like broken by the horror. Yeah, it's about the psychological effect of war yeah. in two different ways, two different extremes. The, the Brando character and Martin Sheen character. Did either of y'all see Fury? Yes. Was it good? Yeah, that is that is intense. That's almost Private Ryan, the beginning of Private Ryan, intense. But it has several scenes that are just visual, viscerally shocking. It's now really I'm good. wondering, like, it's about a tank crew, so it's a different kind of war movie. You go you know inside what, dude? the tank. I watched it. Okay. And it was fantastic. It's good. It's I think really I good. I think I watched it on a like maybe two edibles though. Ah. So it is in a weird space in my brain. Where I wasn't recalling it until I'm looking at the pictures from, of the movie, like yeah. screen grabs. Brad Pitt. I oh, watched the Shia shit LaBeouf. out of this. This was phenomenal. I don't yeah. know why. Shia I, LaBeouf. This mm -hmm. might be what I go watch. Yeah, there's like eight good people in this movie. Would I go watch... Uh, John Bernthal, The Punisher. Yes, I love that guy. He's great. That guy fucking rules. Yeah, he's a great actor. The Walking Dead died yeah. with him. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. I saw Fury with my cousin, who... Is a vet from Iraq. Yeah. And he loved it, and he said it's pretty damn accurate. Just impressed by the uh, yeah, the way it was done. Yeah, that's another good one. Big fan. Big fan. Yeah, anyway. Shit ton of good ones. There's, there's a bunch for you to pick from, Jared. When you get home tonight, and you need something to remind you that you're a pussy boy. Mm. <laughs> Why are you making that face? Are you, poop are you pooping right now? No, I don't poop, but... Are I'm, you pooping? I, I'm just going to watch Ishtar again for the 500th time. Fair enough. As long as you're watching Ishtar, keeping in mind, very brave men and women died so that you could waste your time doing that. Yes. I'm serious. It's important. That's imp that's sort of what I love about Veterans Day and Memorial Day as a holiday. They remind me like all oh, this. It's 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 okay that I do dumb shit because that's sort of what it's about. These guys fought and women fought for the right for me to do dumb shit. And for the right to party, to talk back to the Beastie Boys. Right? Yeah, that's, right. A, that's a call to call back. Uh-huh, uh-huh. RBP is once again partnering with Vincero Watches, and we could not be more excited. The guys over on their team sent so, me a new watch set. It's Vincero? Vincero. We said Vincero for years, Ross. I know. It's hilarious. I actually spoke to their years. founders on the phone, and uh, when he said Vincero, I was like, uh, come again, sir? <laughs> and he was like, Vincero. And I was like, you know the the, uh, the doofuses that I work with, myself included. <laughs> I didn't say that. I was like, the idiots I used to work with were saying it wrong the whole time. Yeah, it's Vincero. 
Vinjero watches. That's news to me. Yeah, I know. It's no shit. But they sent me a new watch set, and let me tell you, it is stunning. I got the uh, Chrono S limited edition, limited release gold reserve Ooh. set. It has an interchangeable strap, and the spare is badass. Makes it like a totally different look. So like, it's an all gold chronograph. Um, but then the strap, the spare strap, is black leather or whatever. It's just a totally different feel if you want to switch it out. It's part of their limited release of new colorways. I was stoked that I was able to scoop one. Ventura watches are unbelievable for the price you pay. You already know how much I love these guys. You've heard me talk about them before. Here is what you need to do. Go to VinceroWatches.com and do not forget to use the code RBP at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Free shipping worldwide. VinceroWatches.com. Ventura does everything in-house. Nothing in their company is outsourced. If you ever have a question, there's a person on the other side waiting to talk to you. Incredibly tight-knit with their customers. Not many companies have that type of community. Ventero puts the customer experience above all else. The deal is really too good to pass up. Go to V-I-N-C-E-R-O, VinceroWatches.com, and use the code RBP to get 15% off. That's VinceroWatches.com. Code RBP for 15% off. Great gifts, multiple collections for men and women. You are bound to find a design that matches your significant other's look and style perfectly this holiday season. Again, it's giving time. Get these sponsors. Get these RBP sponsors. Use these codes and save when you give. Uh, I wanted to quick, give a quick, just like a further shout out. Oh, man, I, I dropped my stress ball. I know. I don't know how the rest of the show is going to go, Jared. A uh, quick further shout out and thank you to everybody listening, uh, men and women who have served. Uh, I know we have a lot of uh, members of the RBP gang who are both active duty um, and veterans. Y'all have, y'all have shared your stories with me, uh, your voicemails, your emails. I, I hear from y'all on Snapchat all the time. And it means a lot uh, because it's a big part of the reason that we do this show to make sure y'all have something to listen to when you need something to listen to. So, and also shouts to the military families out there uh, as well. It, it, it earlier occurred to me in the course of this episode that as a trio, the three of us sitting in this room right now would make for the worst military unit in maybe the history of organized combat and military. In fact, I would argue that there is a 0.0% chance that any of the three of us would ever be cleared for combat duty in the first place. Mm, yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I, I agree. But if we were I somehow allergies. cleared, we'd be the woat. The worst of all time. Aesthetically, <laughs> we are awful. Yeah. Just no. awful. Wait, aesthetically? Aesthetically. Okay, that's... Like pinky and the brain and the brain. It's not good. Which Wait, one am I? Imagine the three of us in camouflage on a battlefield why, trying to complete any mission. Why are you insulting us right now? <laughs> I'm insulting me too, though. Wait, yeah, but it's not. Wait, so you said imagine seeing us no, in camouflage? No, I'm serious. The three of us storming a bunker. I, us I wouldn't be able to see us. We're in camouflage. Next question. Like us in Normandy. The yeah, boat yeah, dropping yeah. down. The thing drops and it's you and me and Mike. Mike, Jared, and Ross standing there with guns. I mean, I'd be safe at home, like... Working the drone situation. Oh, you're that's, a dr- yeah. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. You're already set. Yeah. Well, it's me, okay. Then it's me and Ross. Damn it! I did not consider that you would actually be qualified for some type of military position involving technology. They don't have. <laughs> I could do what uh, what uh, Robin Williams did. Good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> that's right. I could do that whole fucking thing. I could contribute. But he wasn't a soldier. He was just. He was uh, just a hired hand. Yeah. But I could do that. I could. Uh, here's what I would be. If I would that, be. If that's, if that's still a position, I'm just saying. Here's. I, I'm a coward. Like I'll just. You know. That's one of my. That's one of my. One of uh, your defining qualities. Yeah. One of my defining qualities. One of my things that would make me not a great military serviceman. And here's what I would be. I would be the guy who drove the boat up to Normandy. Except the whole time, I would be ducking down, driving blind, just crashing into uh, the other Jared, boats on the way God, over. Damn Jared, it. go straight to the Jared, beach. Sh- 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 I'm just. It's like bumper cars, bumper yeah, boats. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, bumper boats. The whole thing was one. It was all perfectly in line, yeah. like military. And I'm then just they're just, going just, just dish, dish. They never show you that part in the military movies. He's way off to the right. Yeah. Just crashing back and forth into the different ships. Here's a list of my inadequacies that would prevent me from mm-hmm. being a good soldier. I am perpetually late. Tonight was no different. I was 45 minutes late to this recording session. I'm as blind as a bat. I can't see a goddamn thing. If you take my contacts out, I'm serious. You would look as sexy as Cindy Lautner right now. Who's Cindy Lautner? I don't even know. Cindy Lauper? See, now you've got me going on like a Seth MacFarlane. I'm trying Cindy to be Lopper. like Seth like MacFarlane. <laughs> Sydney Sydney Lautner? Cindy Lauper. Uh huh. I have severe anxiety and panic disorder. <laughs> Uh, crippling depression. I'm six foot two, a buck sixty, soaking wet. What are you gonna do with me? Throw me at someone? Uh, I haven't done a pull up since probably 2014. 
Uh, I don't drink. All the other soldiers are going to despise me. And, and what's this fucking yeah. guy's deal? I'm the opposite of calm, cool, and collected under pressure. I have zero calf definition. No calves. I feel like calves are... You ever met like a badass soldier with no calves? I have good calves. No. You, you do have good calves. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. you haven't met a badass them. soldier Let's, with no, no calves. Can we see the calves? Your calves, Jared? You, you want to take your calves? legs out for it? You Shit. do have okay. shapely um, man legs is what I'll say I they are. I the socks down. I got to push the socks down yeah, so do you, you can think? see them. There it yeah. is. Oh, those are oh, just not those bad. Are beautiful. Yeah. No, those are they're thick with two Cs. Golden brown as well. I also think everything is funny, including and maybe even especially death. Shouts to Emily Dickinson and Fleabag. I have zero experience firing a weapon and killing anything. Oh, I yeah. Ki I killed a rabbit in middle school with a shotgun at about four feet away. Now I dropped my cup. You Slowly yeah, I'm you're freaking out over here, dude. <laughs> you okay? I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking about what it would be like if I was in combat. You're about to. <laughs> you're already scared. The, ca the camera's going to pan over to me, and it's going to pan back to you. You're just going to be butt-ass <laughs> naked. We're just gone. Close, <laughs> thrown across the floor, <laughs> all over the cabinet behind you. Jesus. Just a uh, Lisa shirt underneath. Yes, there you go. <laughs> oh, God, what else? Um, uh, yeah, so no, I can't shoot for fuck all. I went to a range once uh, in, in Montana. I spoke about that, actually. I own one gun and no ammo. Well, I will beat you unconscious with it if you break into my house, yeah. and, and then I will let my dogs <laughs> eat your face. I don't do well with authority. I despise all authority, and being yeah. told what to do almost definitely ensures that not only will I not do that thing, but I will likely do the complete and polar opposite. So, like, I'm just imagining, like, like the, the platoon leaders, like, Bolin, attack that flank! And then I, what I do is join uh, the enemy flank on the opposing side of where he was pointing. And I become part of the other team. <laughs> just out of spite. I'm That's, a traitor. You're, yeah, you're, you're... I would betray my country, Jared, is what I'm admitting to. No, I'm just kidding. Um, H, you would go AWOL, and yeah, then I'd be AWOL. immediately... It's like, like shot. I'd be shot. Yeah, yeah. No, you're a deserter. You're like a... You know what? This is you the know. thing. I would be such an inadequate soldier. I would never get to the point of desertion. They would take care of me long before I could consider leaving. They'd be like, we need to, it's because it's here. They'd be like, we can't even let him desert. This guy can't rejoin society and reproduce. He would make such a, the military. I'm just that type of dude. It's the reason my high school baseball coach hated me so much. He was a Vietnam vet. Military men don't like goofy dumbasses right. that smoke weed and want to grow their hair out and don't shave every morning and have their friends cut their hair when they're drunk and have podcasts and spend all their money on Yeezys and shit we're on polar opposites of the fucking scale of dude stuff those type of motherfuckers have always despised me I don't know where I'm going with that they also don't like nerds so they wouldn't like they me. don't like nerds well, either I would be the guy who like carries around the oh the, the radio the, the telephone yeah, on his back yeah, and, yeah, that, that would be yeah. I've, I've made a list of some of my Characteristics. Okay, give us your inadequacies, Jared. <laughs> uh, I'm flatulent. Uh huh. My platoon mates would not like me. Also, if you were in a situation where you needed to be very silent, yeah, yeah, a silent mission, zero dark hour, perhaps, maybe not even thirty, I, maybe zero yeah. dark forty. And next thing you know, Jared's just I'm tipping off the enemy. They know where you are, firing blindly into the dark. Now, mission failed. Yeah, wasted uh, pops up on the screen. <laughs> I I'm also a corn cob. What does that mean? Please uh, don't be sexual. It's not. It's not sexual. I, I'm just. It's just a general characteristic personality trait. I'm a corn cob. Okay. Uh, next. I'm a fax machine. <laughs> next up. Uh, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm a toaster oven. I'm a toaster. Yeah, oven. Remember, yeah. Remember trying I'm to a find oven. trying to find your way home. Yep. And also just like that's what I yell when I'm really bad at Fortnite. I'm like I'm a toaster oven. Yeah. I'm a potato. That's that's not, still yeah, one of my favorite. Potato is one of them too. That's yeah. a good one. But I'm a toaster oven. Go uh, ahead. I, I own a lot of pants that don't fit well anymore. Yeah, they don't like it when you don't keep your uniform and shit tight, dude. No, uh, it would be too tight. It w it would be they'd be like, "Jared, you're bulging out over here, man. We're we're trying to we're trying to like what are you trying to get, get in horny? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what the drill sergeant's yelling you want me at me. To fuck you, son. <laughs> uh, next up, I don't like sand. <laughs> you, you know what? It's funny. I was thinking at first. I was like, that feels like geographicist against the Middle East, but it's not. No beaches? Matter, I'm from Florida. Yeah, there, and there's beaches often involved, I feel like. I'm thinking of the SEAL training. The shit they do on the beach there, and the, you roll around in the goddamn oh, yeah. sand after swimming in the freezing water until you can't breathe or feel your body, and then they roll you around in the sand and make you like go get a 700-pound yeah. log and carry it with your boys. And then you got to like bury yourself 25 feet deep underwater in the sand like you're a stingray. Yeah, and then they, and then they leave you there for like three and a half weeks, and they come back. And if you've built a house that would be suitable for a lower middle class family 
in a, a in a coastal state out of then you get in out of a pineapple simply just one pineapple a small model of a house that would be suitable for a lower middle class family in a coastal state or a sponge yeah that was a spongebob i don't know i don't know four weeks later <laughs> oh yeah next up uh i have shin splints when i when i run uh moderately small distances add this one to my list as well j bone hate it. hate running yeah shin splints every time i there i have to do the elliptical makes me want to i cry. thought you were a runner i used to be oh. until the splints happened oh. it was the combination of the shin splints and the in inability to keep weight on yeah can't be running around looking like Forrest Gump after he ran the whole country. <laughs> Skinny as fuck with a beard like Merlin. It's a good look in Austin. Yeah, that actually, that's, that's why I guys. can't do it. I, I tr Those are like the most eligible people. I already look like I fit in here too well at this point. It's, it's, I, don't, I can't do that beard. I will say this. Uh, most of my deodorant is extra strength. I've, I'm smelly. They wouldn't like me. You know? My yeah, that's an, again, the it's enemy could be, it's not, hating me. It's not even, it's, it's, you smell so bad that the enemy could smell you. I don't, I, I is this personal? I was, no, mostly, now we're, now, now you, I'm just considering like, oh, okay, yeah, now yeah, our yeah. unit's in a bush. Not only do I have to worry about like, if they discover us, like we would be in a bush because yeah. that's where we'd be hiding. Like we did in Fortnite all the time. And then, and then, and then the enemy would be walking by and they'd be like, They would smell you. They wouldn't know if I farted or if it was my BO. Either way, I'm giving my whole entire squad away, right? Mike, I saw Parasite last night. Ooh, what'd you think? There's some smelling in, that goes on in that yeah, film. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. It It is a phenomenal movie. It is something fucking else. You can um, smell the pore on them. Yeah, yeah. we're going to we're gonna talk about it on uh, on OCC. It's, Everybody it watch is, Parasite. Whoo, it's wild. Continue, Jared, with your inadequacies, please. Um, this is a big one, a really big one. Uh, most of my shirts are made of highly flammable polyester. Mm hmm If a mortar... You is... realize they're gonna take your clothing and give you military garb. A uniform. It, it wouldn't they're fit. They're gonna issue you. It wouldn't fit. I you... Also, if it doesn't have three buttons and is from a sports authority that's not around anymore, Like, I don't have think you I'd ever wanna... even been a soldier for Halloween? Like... It, it, it wouldn't even be a good costume. I used to play you. airsoft. No, one time, I think I told this story on the podcast. I shot an air rifle, and I'd never used a scope before. Yeah, this you, is and this is like a really high power. Yeah, yeah, one. yeah. And this I was put, recent. Yeah, and I put my ear directly up to the scope like you do in Call of Duty or Halo, because I thought that's how you did it. And then I got a black eye. Yeah. So that would happen, but it would be a gun, and my face would be uh, cut You'd off. Probably in lose half. your eye. Yeah, probably. I probably would. You'll shoot your eye. Out. Just gonna run through these. Can't do five push-ups. Cigarettes make my mouth taste weird. Uh, and I do feel like you have to rip cigs to I, get respect in the army. I want to say I've smoked Military. nine cigs in my life. Seven of them were in one night. And see, for this reason, I might be able to cancel out the non-drinking thing. Like I'll smoke a thousand cigarettes. I don't give a fuck. Nothing will happen. I'm completely <laughs> unaffected. Yes. I've smoked so many cigarettes and so much weed at this point. I am a chimney. I can take in any amount of smoke and handle that. I should be a fireman if this podcasting thing doesn't work out. I don't. Because I can run into the, you know how firemen have to deal with a ton of smoke inhalation issues. Yeah, but it's also like really, really hot smoke and it burns your lungs. I love hot weather. Okay. This is my last, my last point. Uh, I would make too many jokes about the word discharge. Yep. Yep. You, you, you're with me on that one? And the constant jokes about other things that are just, it, it totally inappropriate times. Just, just, you're the, you're just so inappropriate. Private? <laughs> right. They'd be like, you did. I'm, here's what I'm picturing, because I just watched Band of Brothers again. Uh, there's a guy who's been shot, one of your boys. He's down. He's on his back. There's four guys over him. You're one of them. You're all struggling to cover the hole and get out the bandages and fucking do the things and, like, hit him with a morphine. And then Jared cracks some stupid fucking joke about the guy's sister being hot or something. Like, like I won't fuck your sister too hard. That would be you. That would not, I would not do that. Yes, you would to I'm a not, dying I'm, soldier, I would Jared. Not, I'm, how, how dare you? I would not do that. What is wrong with you? If I made any joke in that situation, it would have it would be to make him happier in his final moments. Unbelievable, Mike. Do you do you want to share your inadequacies with us? Uh, Hopefully, you wouldn't bone any of your squad mates dying squad mates sisters like Jared. This is for all the times you made up things about my life. Oh, true. Yeah, I did do that. I still I still do that. <laughs> Jared had a bit for like six months where he would just say stories about my life that were completely untrue until it finally got to the point where I was like, J Bone. You have to stop. People are starting to believe random shit you're saying that never happened to me. Shouts to Granix Gaming. They heard all of those. That if you was want, the if main you place that went down. Go back to Granix Gaming. Yeah, that was the main place that there was like an excessive amount of 
false life facts about me giving out. Also, possibly the funniest podcast of all time that only 3,000 people listen to. Yeah, people still message me about that. Somebody commented it in the Twitch chat. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Mike, your inadequacies, please. I think the main one would be the one you have. I just hate authority. Yeah. I just buck against it all the time. It's a natural thing you can't yeah. help. No. I mean, also, I'm a misanthrope, and I hate everybody. What's a myself. misanthrope? It's when you hate people. Uh, like you just, humans. You just hate the humans. You despise yeah. the human race. And if I'm going to be fighting. I used to be a misanthrope. Yeah, if I'm going to be fighting for humans, that's not going to work. I'll just. I'll just say, yeah. if you smoke enough weed, yeah. you, will, you won't be a misanthrope anymore. It takes the... I like the idea of It takes of people, the hate out of your heart, Mike. I, I like the idea of people. And uh -huh. I'm generally nice to people. Yeah, you're like one of the nicest people I've ever met. So I appreciate it's, it's that. It's strange that you don't yeah. like... But humans. I don't... It's strange that you don't yeah. like me. <laughs> <laughs> you die, don't you, Mike? Yeah, yeah. I, people are terrible. Oh, fine. Fair enough. Misanthrope. Mike over here. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Fighting for people is going to be problematic for you if you dislike them. Oh yeah, no motivation. Where's the motivation? That's I mean, a if, Christmas dinner for the if people. They on pay relief. well. Does the army pay well? Sometimes. Actually, in, in a lot of cases, it's you. The military benefits and shit are not not bad. Yeah. Like no joke. Yeah, the, the GI Bill. They take. They, they I don't, take I, I, I don't know. In some cases, now I don't know how it works. Yeah, I was there's say. a lot of weird. Fucking sh loopholes and shit where you can miss out or lose out on your. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know all. The I things. know. I guarantee you that if we said they have a lot of good benefits, a lot of soldiers would be like, "Oh, guess oh, what? Yeah? They actually don't." Hey, guess what, guy? I'm in the army. My benefits suck ass, and you're a moron. And I'd be like, "Yep, yep." No <laughs> argument. Sh shouldn't have said that. Shouldn't yeah. have said it. So let's just say it now. We have no goddamn clue about the benefits of, the, of being in any branch of the military. I hope they're really good, but I would not be surprised if they're not. I would hope yep. they're really good too, but I also watched John Stewart have to go to Congress and yep. tell people that we needed fucking uh, health care for 9/11 first responders. And they so, didn't. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. So you never know. I thought they eventually did. They didn't get it. I they, thought they eventually got no, it passed. They didn't get it. They didn't pass it. I'm pretty sure they did. I don't think they did. Mike. 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 <laughs> I like how we just instantly go to Mike. You, dude, I have no I'm, idea. I'm pretty confident they did, and it was like months later. And it was a big deal. No, because Rand Paul voted against it. I remember that. I'm just saying, you better be right that you're, because I'm allowed to be wrong. Oh. John Stewart calls Rand Paul a scalawag and a ragamuffin. That's the first one That's you the see. the headline. John Stewart calls Rand Paul a scalawag and ragamuffin. Yeah, it passed. <laughs> you stupid idiot. Did it, it didn't pass originally. It passed a month and a half after his speech. First responders bill passed January July twenty fourth two thousand nineteen is the uh, date. Well, of the, uh, column thank God, that. thank God. You silly, silly, ignorant fool! You foolish, ignorant fool, Jared. I retract my previous incorrect statement. Thank you, thank you, and replace it with butt poop, poop butt, poop butt, poop butt. <laughs> Hashtag poop butt. <laughs> now some very important announcements before you head out to take on the world. First of all, if you've ever thought to yourself, I need more episodes of this podcast, there's only one place to get them. Other than where you get your regularly scheduled programming on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on SoundCloud. You can get more RBP on Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Uh, it's ad-free, and we include video. This very episode was filmed entirely and will be available on Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast in the coming days even. And you could watch it. Wouldn't that be something? Put faces to names and vo or fa faces to voices, rather. Both. Both. You can put faces to whatever you want. Just don't put your dick to my face. Right, Jared? That's all we ask. I know you're not listening. I could, I could have said anything right there and you would have agreed with it and I used it on the worst on putting dicks to faces. You said, so, yeah, I, I heard that part. I could have said anything. Yeah, I'm, just, bad. I'm I, just mad at myself for blowing the opportunity because you were in the zone. I was looking at football. You knew stuff. this was a part where you didn't have to pay attention. It is. Do, what's the score do you think of the NFL game? Seattle Who's Seahawks. Who's Monday Night Football? Seattle Seahawks, San Francisco 49ers undefeated. Okay, I'm going to guess what quarter is it? Uh, I like this game. It's, it's a fun one. It's first and ten, San Francisco 22nd. There is 30 seconds Just left the in the quarter. second. 30 seconds left in the second quarter. Uh, gonna I'm going to guess that it's... I'm going to guess it is 10-6 Seattle. It is 10-7 San Francisco. Damn it! Damn! I mean, really, you weren't that close. No. No, <laughs> not really. Not really. But, I, but the numbers you said were somewhat close. That's, no. that's a small victory. What did itself. that have to do with, with sports? Uh, something about a dick in a face. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't paying attention, and I tried to take advantage of you. Yeah. Um, which isn't the first time, Jared. You know? You know? Jared? 
Uh, yeah, so patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. And the funny thing is when you sign up, you get, it's not funny. The other thing that just happened was funny. You get the entire backlog of our, of all the content that came out in October and August and July and June and all the other months that we've had Patreon content. You'll get that right when you sign up. It's five bucks. Join the RBP gang. Uh, you get a special guest episode each month also. Our special guest this month is Mike Burns. You get a Hotline Call Extravaganza episode each month. Again, both ad-free. And you're also going to be the only people who have the first shot. Actually, not first shot. You're going to be the only people who have the opportunity to purchase our first ever batch of uh, RBP merch. The t-shirts and hats that we've got coming and some stickers too. Uh, the designs have been turned in. The product is being created. And they will be available on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast as soon as in the next couple weeks. So... Go sign up, join the RBP gang today, five bucks. Rate and review, share the show, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you can follow me, Ross Bolin, at W-R-B-O-L-E-N, at W-R Bolin on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. Not Facebook. I don't know why I said Facebook. It's Twitter. I'm sleepy. Jared, where can we follow you? You can follow on me social medias. on Twitter at Jared Borislow. Go follow me right now. Uh, and make sure you unfollow Ross Bolin Pod in the process. Do it now. You can, <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at Jared Borslow and also at Tinder Convos for the funniest dating app conversations you've ever seen. Make sure you follow that account and send the conversations to your mother so you can have a very awkward Thanksgiving. Thank Kids you. say the darndest things. Mike, where can we follow you and hear more from no, you? Don't, and, don't and, talk about Bill Cosby shows. And your here. products here at Permanent Record. My products. Um, your products at Mike Moody on that you, Twitter that you produce. Yes, my products uh -huh. at Mike Moody on Twitter. I also produce a Watchmen podcast about the HBO show Watchmen. Yeah, called Who Pods a Watchmen. Who Pods a Watchmen. dot com. Nice. Also, listen to Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, our television and film podcast here at Bolin Media. Uh, what did we talk about recently? The Apple TV Plus lineup. Dolomite is my name on Netflix. The King on Netflix. I finally watched Bone Tomahawk. We discussed some of that as well. And that will do it for RBP 240, recorded and produced by Mike Moody and Grant Davis at Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. Once again, special salute, thanks, and appreciation to all of the servicemen and women out there in the RBP gang. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Hit me with snaps, man. I love hearing from y'all. Hit me with emails. Holler at me in the DM. The DMs suck. I'll be frank with you. The DMs are ruined. It's very tough for me to get through the DMs. Email or uh, or uh, Snapchat is is, is still going to be your best bet. Snapchat's awesome. I everybody love, send Ross an email. I love the email. picks. I love the picks. Not everybody send Ross an email. Dude, that is not a prompt. Um, we'll be back Wednesday for episode 241. RBP 241 coming Wednesday. Podman gets paid. Strength and honor. Gang, gang, gang. Peace be with you and also with you. Go low, baby. Go low, baby.